I, because in North Korea, I was like, I just couldn't, I just wanted to read that book. Why this book, this ideology killed that many people? In this world, nothing has killed more than communism. The like Mao killed 50 to 60 million people. I mean, can you, like Stalin, nothing. Not even Nazism, not even like, not even poverty, not even like a nuclear war. Nothing cared more than communism in this world, in human history. And that's why I was like, I just had to read this, this damn thing. Like, what was this that cared, destroyed my people, destroyed my, it cared my father. It cared my father. And, and just, it just, I just had to read it and reading and reading and just made no sense. And then it's like, I just stopped there. I was like, okay, there's no point of me keep reading because I just want you to understand the mindset why they were doing this. But it just, uh, it's just so evil. You sound like so nice, but what, what, what it comes to is so evilness, the greed of power control. And you do not respect the very, the, you don't trust the human decency and you believe you have to control them. And like collectives and all of this is like, completely disrespect the human dignity. Well, and, why, mm -hmm. why do you think the concept of socialism and communism and folks like Bernie Sanders or AOC or even a younger crowd that's coming up right now, the other day, an article came out from Harvard saying 57% of the youth accept socialism as a way and they think capitalism is bad. Why do you think in a country where you and I couldn't wait to get to because this is our dream, right? The, all these freedoms, you know, why do you think this concept of socialism and communism is so attractive in the U.S. educational system with many politicians today in America saying America is a bad country? I mean, I read an article that came out yesterday written by Business Insider by Margaret Ward. What's her last name? Margaret, uh, something like that, where she said the top five best countries to raise kids in and the top five worst countries to raise kids in. I think the top five worst, fifth place was Bulgaria, fourth place was Turkey, I don't remember who third place was. Second place was U.S. as the worst country to raise kids in. And first place was uh, Mexico. And, and this whole concept of Americans bashing America that we should go to European or socialism or communism is not really that bad. Why do you think that's happening in America? And how do you view it when people start saying things like that? I absolutely have no... I think I can understand why some people are saying that because, you know, communism was tried. And whenever it was tried, it failed, right? But people bought it at that time. Like people started following Lenin and like, like they all did, they, they followed, they bought the idea. So I can see how appealing the idea is. Got it. And especially to young people who a lot of people don't pay when you're young, don't pay taxes, right? You don't work, you don't actually understand how the economy really works. And also I think because now life is so easy, right? Like when you're born, your mortality rate is so low, especially in the US. I think this generation expects life to be easy. That's what their expectation is. And like you and I know we you're born in Iran, I was born in North Korea. You, you know that our ancestors from go back into the time, life was so difficult for them. People like fantasize about old days, like no, old days people died from cancer, so many different things. And now there's a lot of cancer can even curable. Here in America, people say like doctors say colon cancer, a lot of times it can be cured. My father never had to die if he was in freedom. He only died because he was he was in communist, socialist, communist China and communist, socialist North Korea. And I think just the only thing is that, I mean, if there's no capitalism, the people I'm sure you're going to see this, going to criticize, they're not going to have YouTube. They're not going to have Twitter. Without capitalism, how any of this is possible? Capitalism is making it available for us to have all of this, have excessive food, have opportunity, have the, all the device that we own today, even, even Zoom. 
Do you think you can find Zoom in North Korea? No, there's no Skype in North Korea. Without capitalism, how do we have any of this? And I think just they don't. And I think for me, it's like, it's just, I don't, I mean, like if you worship communism and socialism that much, just go to North Korea. Why don't you just immigrate to North Korea? Because like everyone wants to come to US. That's why everyone's coming here and all these people like, why don't you open the border and give all everybody citizenship and let them in, right? That's how demanding Americans are, American citizenship is. So, I mean, do North Korea have that problem? So if those people really want that kind of system, I think they just should immigrate to those places. Cause like, you know, I mean, that is my ideology. If you're gonna worship to me about like the grainy socialism, go to North Korea. It is the last country that pure holds of this ideology. So it's it's that easy. Like it's not, North Korea is not that far away it's in, in our planet. They can go and have their dream of this being socialist. Yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes from somebody like you who has seen things a lot, you have lived the life of thousands of people in one. It's not the life. I mean, you can't compare the things you've witnessed and your eyes. Like if somebody was to close their eyes, they create a technology to connect my brain to yours. And within a five minute period, I can witness all the things you've witnessed, the level of pain my body would go to, I probably would pass out if I was able to witness the stuff that you've seen with your own eyes painful stuff you talk about that doesn't sound real to the average person that you only see this stuff in a movie but you've experienced it so your point of view is coming from a different point of view and sometime when you're born in america in in the most incredible country in the world yeah. that people have not seen anything else all they want to see is the things that it does wrong they have no clue how bad it is in other places none i mean we exist we live we this uh these victims do exist of this human trafficking and this regime but you don't see a lot of like defectors coming like Iran, you know, a lot of, I know a lot of actors from, from Iran, the women's like rights, but not from North Korea because one, even after they escape, I spoke, oh, you saw that video, right? In 2014, I gave everyone your word. Oh, thank yeah. Uh, two months later, I don't even two months later, North Korean regime captured all my family my nephews and my cousins, even my neighbors, anyone knew me, put into propaganda video on YouTube and they all got vanished because I spoke out after my escape. So you think like I'm free right now, but I'm not free. Defectors after they escape, they are not still free. They are, they are assassinated. They actually regime, you know, like Kim Jong-nam got like poisoned. Kim Jong, Kim Jong, the brother of Kim Jong in Malaysia, he poisoned his brother in where there are CCTVs. Of course, he doesn't care killing a defector. Who cares? Nobody gonna bother him. So he cares a lot of defectors who speak out. Not only them, the family members who's left it behind. So defectors, when they escape and speak out, they still pay so much price to have the voice and have this presence unlike a lot of other countries, when they escape, they are almost like done with their country and they can like move forward. But the fact is us, we cannot move forward. We still like get threat. I, I'm on the top like, like list of the regime. Kim Jong-un of course wants to scare me. And I think that's why I do want to be free someday from this regime, from this dictator completely. So I can say whatever I want and, not, and I don't get that threats.